this class is being live streamed. And let's start the recording and let's get this party started. Oh, see now I, I'm not co-host. I can't start the recording. So somebody else will have to do that. Okay, so Megan or Todd, could somebody make me co-host and could- Yes, I'm making you the okay. host. Okay, all right. Patience, everybody. Uh, it's kind of interesting because today's topic is about bone health and bones are like the most dense, slowest growing part of our bodies. So I guess it's all about slow down, take a breath. The important things will get conveyed here. All right, and let's see. All right, very good. Now I can start the recording. All right. So welcome to our class on self-healing through touch. And we do at the end of class, we do a little guided imagery to work with the power of your, of your mind. And one last thing here. Yeah, I will do that when I find your name, which is some here, somewhere in here. I, I don't see your name, Todd. Oh, there you are. Okay. More. Come on. All right. I think we've got it together here. So I'm Ellen Shapiro. I'm your guide for this class, self-healing through touch and guided imagery. And our focus today, and I'm taking different topics each week based on requests that I've received, and then also choosing topics that I think will be of interest to a lot of people here, because this is not individual health guidance, really, but um, somebody was talking about osteoporosis and osteopenia and all these bone issues, and hopefully all or most of you have healthy bones, and it's not really an issue right now, but as we get older, it is definitely something that we want to monitor and take care of and prevent for a number of reasons. And certainly our posture and our overall well being, but also because uh, we get at risk of falls when we get older. And it's one of the most serious things when an older person fractures the hip, or, you know, that's the biggest one where you can end up being in the hospital and it's kind of can be a cascade of like issues and who wants that anyway, right? We wanna have nice, strong, healthy bones. So the focus in the class is on self-healing through touch, but because it's a health topic, I just wanna, you know, say some things to sort of frame the whole issue because, you know, like I've just been aware of it very generally. It's not something I've been that concerned about personally, but like women and especially over 70, it's, it's a pretty serious consideration for a lot of us. And it's also one of these things, what I really love is like empowering you to learn more about prevention. And there's actually, I did not realize that it's, it seems pretty treatable unless you're in a really severe case of it. And if you already have been diagnosed, hopefully you are getting some medical care as well. And what I'm gonna to talk to you about can only add to that information. And for those of us that are more in prevention and maintenance mode, it's all good for you too. So just a couple of factors. So, you know, osteoporosis is an extreme level of the thinning of the bones. Uh, osteopenia is a milder version of that, but it's bone loss. And there is, a, some of that happens as we age, just, it just happens, but we can slow it way down. We can, we can actually build bone again. And so I learned some things in researching this. Um, so generally in, in itself, it's not life-threatening, which is good to know. You can live many years, even if you have this condition, by slowing it way down. Uh, there's some basic things which you may or may not be aware of, but 
weight bearing is the biggest thing that keeps our bones dense. So that what is weight bearing? Well, there's weight bearing exercises where you're standing, right? So you're standing on your body weight. So Qigong, which I teach, and Tai Chi are both excellent weight bearing exercises. And in fact, there has been some research on Tai Chi. I haven't seen research yet. I haven't found it yet on Qigong about that, how it is so beneficial. So weight bearing, your diet, and some very, very simple things. Sunlight, which helps our body make vitamin D and making sure you have enough vitamin D. So if you live in a climate where it's cold and you're not outside in the sun a lot, most people and most people in the world, not just this country, are deficient in vitamin D. So these are simple things you can do that have other health benefits as well. Um, but what it says here is that unless somebody has a severe case of osteoporosis, low bone density can almost always be stabilized or even improved. And this was from Dr. Axe's website. It can take at least six to 12 weeks and sometimes longer. Uh, but even with treatment, including medications, our bone mass won't turn exactly back completely to normal if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis. So for a lot of us, the goal is prevention or stopping if you're already in, it's happening, stopping the bones from becoming even weaker. Uh, so I have some pretty detailed notes for today, which you will get uh, after the class. And uh, we'll probably do a little screen share here. But in, the, in the, the notes that are like a supplement, I'm not gonna really talk about all the stuff that's in the notes. Uh, there's a lot of good information there about some basic things about what foods are good for keeping bones strong. Here, let me get out the background. Okay, I, we were hearing somebody in the background there. Uh, food, physical activity, again, weight bearing is key. There are certain things that are really great. And there's certain things though, if you already have osteoporosis or you know that you just had a lot of bone loss, you actually wanna be careful that you're not doing things that are too high impact because you don't wanna cause a fracture. So in cases like that, swimming, um, Yoga and Tai Chi is always recommended. Pilates, walking is another one. Um, but anyway, this is all in the supplemental information. And again, a couple of other things about vitamin D, how much you should get, and some supplements that may be good. And again, this is not individualized health advice. So please do your own research, check with other practitioners, look at stuff online. Don't just, I, I'm not prescribing for you, but these are some general guidelines and these come from medical you know, doctors' websites. So let's go into some self-healing around all this. And yeah. So what we're gonna focus on is some acupressure and some other things that we can do with our hands on our own body. And something else I found, which is really cool for building bone density. So we'll talk about acupressure, which is working on like working usually with your finger. You can use a massage tool or, you know, there's other ways to do it, but the simplest thing that we all have available is our fingers on a point. So an acupuncture point, that's called acupressure. I'm gonna show you some reflexology and that's working on different points. We're gonna do some more work on the feet today and there's different reflexology, but the best one known is working on the feet where you're not just massaging the feet, you're actually working on specific points on the foot that are reflexes, they correspond to other parts of the body. And just a couple of other things that are simple things you can do for yourself. So acupressure is related to acupuncture, which is Chinese medicine. 
In Chinese medicine, the bones are related to the water element, which is the kidneys and the bladder. And when I use kidneys and bladder, and I'm talking in the Chinese medicine framework, I am talking about a whole energetic system of energy. I'm not just literally talking about the kidney organ. That's where Chinese medicine is a little different than Western. So we're talking really here about the kidney points, the kidney energy in the body, which again, the meridians are these pathways. The kidney meridian actually comes down the front of the body. It doesn't actually go directly to the kidneys, which are in the back, which is kind of interesting. So um, the best things that we can do in terms of acupressure uh, are working, stimulating the kidney meridian points. And the most effective ones are that the meridian is a pathway. There's the, the first point one is where it starts. And the, on the kidney meridian, there are 27 points. Kidney 27 is the end point. So these are the ones that we're gonna do. So you may have seen this, if you come to my Qigong class, you may have heard me talk about this before. The kidney one point, the starting point of the kidney meridian. Here, I've got, I've got a picture. Okay, I don't have it handy, but it's pretty easy to show you right where it is. So the kidney one point is on the bottom of the foot. And however you can reach your foot, if you can just bring it, put it up on your other knee, that's great. If not, you may need to like put it like on a little low footstool and lean forward. But let's see if I can show you. I uh, always have to make sure my feet are clean, which are not super clean, but pardon me. Uh, it's right, right in the middle of the foot, about a third of the way down, like just sort of under the second toe, right in the middle there, just under the ball of the foot. That is kidney one. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do some slapping of that and not like a hard slap. We don't want to hurt ourselves, but we're going to stimulate that point. So you can hold it with your thumb, but the slapping is also really good. And this also can give you some alertness. It has other benefits, but now we're talking about working with it in terms of, uh, let's see, change camera. For you. Okay, and now we're all right. So here is a nice way to do it. I'm just going to turn it so I can reach my foot, and I'm just going to slap lightly right into that point. And I'm going to do. You can do up to thirty of these, but we'll do about a dozen. So if you can join me, please do. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. So it shouldn't hurt. It's not that hard, but there's a little, you know, there's a little slight sting to it. Let's do the other foot. So again, as a slap, I'm not like on one, I'm not like right on the point, right? Because it's just like a wide, I'm covering a wide area. So if you're worried about, did I get the exact point? The slapping really will cover it. So here we go. One, two, three, four. All right. So again, the kidney one point, we just did some slapping. And um, one of my Qigong teachers, people were asking her and she said, you could do that every day. It's not, you really can't overdo it. I mean, I wouldn't do it a hundred times because that would just be kind of a lot, but it's not something, there's not a problem to do often or do up to like 30 repetitions of that. And anything, this is like the number one anti-aging longevity thing in Chinese medicine is supporting the kidneys. And that's because the kidneys are feeding all the other organs. So that's why 
there's a lot of, and you'll see if you come to my Qigong classes, I talk about that and we do quite a bit of, of things for the kidneys and that this is why. So it's, it's keeping our vital energy flowing. It's also energizing and rejuvenating to do anything for the kidneys. So that was kidney one slapping or just hold the point. If you really, if the slapping is like really bothers you, it just can't do it, just hold the point. And if you really can't reach it with your hand, you can get like, you know, a tennis ball or some other not too soft, not too hard ball and press your foot down onto that point. So when we have some restrictions in our, in our movement, then we have to get creative with these things. All right, so that was kidney one. The other one is a couple of things we're gonna do with the other. So that was kidney one, kidney 27. If you come down, like here's like a central notch and here's my collarbone, I'm gonna come down here about an inch down from the bone. So it's kind of on either side of the midline about here. Yeah, it may be sore and it may not be. So this is the kidney 27 point. And so what can you do with this point? Again, you can just massage in, and I find it easier to use two fingers. You can use one or you can use your thumbs. Again, it doesn't really matter which finger, just whatever one works for you. So here's just a little gentle massage. And you can start light and kind of go in slowly and you can move circle around the area. We can also do a little tapping or slapping. So this would be just tapping, which would probably be easier than trying to slap our own chest and probably feel better. So I just keep my fingers relaxed and soft and I'm just tapping around that whole area. And you might be thinking, okay, well, this, like, we're talking about bones here, right? They're really dense. They're really like, like this light little tapping, like, what is that going to do? And over time, any of these things, but especially where we're looking to build bone health, it's not going to be like, okay, I did it on Monday, and now my bone density is now up 10%. You have to do it, you know, repeatedly for, you know, a while to see some benefits, but know that you're also doing a lot of other good things for your body at the same time. Uh, so we had the kidney one at the bottom of the foot. We had this point, and this is another cool thing. This isn't really, I mean, it may be part of Chinese medicine. This came from an article by the Cleveland Clinic which is this one is really good, especially for building density in the hips, which is one of the most difficult. If you fracture your hip, it's one of the more difficult things. Okay, so it's just foot stomping. So this goes back to the idea that anytime we're pressing onto a bone, weight bearing, it increases, you know, it puts a little bit of stress on the bone and a little bit of stress, but not too much is actually what the body needs for, for everything. Like when I teach ageless grace, it's like, okay, we don't really stress the body exactly, but we're trying to build new brain pathways. So we make the brain get a little bit outside its comfort zone. And that's, that's what I mean by like a little bit of stress, but not too much. Um, which is why, again, if you think about like here, when we're talking about building bone, when you're sedentary, when you're sitting too much or you're just not active, you're not putting any weight on the bone. You're not giving it any kind of stress or tension. It actually, that's not good for it. So that's an interesting idea, right? I mean, now everybody talks about, you know, stress is really bad. And of course, too much stress is definitely bad. And Emotional stress is really challenging too, but a little bit of stress, a little bit of challenge is better for the body than no stress at all. And it also makes us more resilient. So think about somebody who has, a, has had a very, very protected life, never had much stress. I mean, I don't know anybody like that, but let's just imagine 
So then suddenly something happens in their world and they're, they don't know how to deal with it. They're actually going to be a lot worse off than somebody who knows who's developed more resilience. So foot stomping and all you need to do for this one is stomp your foot, four stomps on each foot twice a day, but using enough force to crush a soda can. So that's pretty hard. So be careful about that. So what I would do for that, I'm not gonna demonstrate at this moment because I have a very hard tile floor, but I would put the yoga mat or like a pretty thin carpet, something. So you're not like smacking your foot right down on a hard surface. That's gonna hurt your, it's gonna be a little painful and might, I mean, we don't want you to injure your foot, but let's just try it. And um, if you feel like you can, if not, it's not really complicated, but just to demonstrate, I think I, I, think I actually will get my yoga mat. It's right here. So crushing a soda can, that's aluminum soda can is not that thick, right? It's not that hard, but it's a pretty definite kind of stomp, right? So probably can't really see my feet, but just getting a sense of it. So I'm gonna do four on each foot. So, so I feel like you should feel it in your leg a little bit. So I feel my bone got something there. I got a little bit jarred by that. And if you know you have thin bones, then just do it very, very light. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And that's it. What could be easier than that? And they said four on each side, twice a day. It says this can actually lead to increased bone density in your hips. So how cool is that? So again, you know, bone might seem like a very, very hard, solid thing, but it is living tissue and it can be influenced for, you know, better or worse by our diet, our movement, all these things. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the reflexology for this. All right. So let me sh screen share with you. Uh, let's see, where is it? While I'm, while I'm finding this little chart, if you have questions, you can type it in the chat or just speak them out loud. Yeah, here it is. All right, here's the chart. All right, before I go to that, let me see if there's anything in the chat. Okay, so again, if you have any questions you wanna ask at the moment of anything I've said so far, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and just ask. Or type in the chat, I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay, so let's do the screen share. Uh, here we go. All right, so here is our reflexology chart. And if you just go down, if you look at like the line that's under, like there's a, just a little narrow line on the edge of the foot that comes down from the big toe and see if you can make it bigger on your own screen because it might look small for you. Um, you can, if you can find a little thing that looks like a magnifying glass, you may be able to zoom out or in. Um, and we're not gonna spend a lot of time on the chart. I just thought it was easier to show you here. 
So if you just take that little, there's like a little narrow line <clears throat> that comes along the side of the big toe coming down the whole length of the foot. And that corresponds to the spine. So if you can see where it says like neck, cervical spine, and let's see, lumbar vertebrae are the, are the low back. So this line that just comes down, if you just went straight down from your big toe along this like inside edge of your foot, that line corresponds to the spine. And this is where, and so we can do reflexes to all the bones by working along that. And if you've ever had reflexology, it's a lovely kind of foot treatment. Probably the person who was working on you would do that. It's always a little harder to work on ourselves, but what you do again, is just get your foot so you can reach it and either hopefully up on your knee, but if you don't have that flexibility, again, put the foot down on like a stool or a low table where you can reach it. And we start here, just get your thumbs. Let's just start right at the base of the big toe and just put both thumbs right there. And then just pressing in. And so there's some pressure, again, not digging, but you know, it's definitely stimulating. And then just, if you've ever seen like a cat kneading things, it's kind of a kneading motion, like kneading bread, that kind of kneading. So we just kind of push one thumb, then the other, and we're gonna come right down from the base of the big toe onto the ball of the foot, just the very bottom where it meets kind of the side of the foot. And most people have a little bunion there like I do. So we're right there. And then you're gonna keep walking down and just, let's just take a little massage. I don't know how well you can see it. And I don't really, I wish I had like a laser pointer to show you on this diagram, but just right around that bunion point. So, so on the foot, but in line with the big toe, just kind of working right into that whole point there. So it's really the ball of the foot but on the closest edge to like the, the inside of the foot. And just massage in, just pressing in, moving around that general area. You can go up, down, a little bit in to the, towards the pinky side, really spending some attention on that area. And then continue down that very side edge of the foot. Where, so we're working down all the spine reflex points. And you come down kind of into the side of the arch of your foot. And if you find a real sore point, you may want to stay there a little bit longer, but just go in gently. Don't start like full gangbusters, just go in slow and then press more deeply and find the level of pressure that's good for you. And then continue down and we go all the way down. So we're at the like the end of the arch of the foot, and we're starting to get into the side of the heel there. Keep going. And then right there, so you're kind of in line with that, the malleolus, that's the bone that sticks out from your ankle. So you're now kind of in a straight line down on the foot. Stay there and kind of go around that whole area, and that corresponds to your low back and your hips, where we really want to make sure we have some good bone density. So. And let's do the other foot. So we've got bones on both sides. And so now for me, I don't know why this foot is harder for me to reach, but um, see if you can get creative. Maybe putting the foot up on a pillow might help. So, and you know, if you find this really difficult, but you want to try it, See if you can get, you know, if you have a partner or a friend who's willing to do this with you, it could be fun, just work on each other's feet. So we're starting again, right at the ball of the big toe, the base of the big toe, along that, that ball of the foot, side of the foot there, really working a lot into that, where you flex the toes, the ball of the foot there, 
and keep going down that, that inside edge and trying to cover all points and you can alternate with the thumbs. And if your arms are shorter, again, you're having trouble reaching the points, you may want to get a little massage tool or anything that's not too sharp, that's like, has like a kind of a, hmm. Somebody was said in one of the classes was talking about, how about like the, the end of a wooden spoon that's kind of rounded, but thin. So that could work or anything like that shape. Of course, nothing too sharp and nothing and a little bit, a little bit of width. Cause if it's very, very narrow, like I was going to say, like a stylus, like you might get with like a, a cell phone, that's too pointy. Then you're going to hurt yourself. So going all the way down, make sure you get that lower points too. And it just should just feel really like good and maybe a little, a little bit stimulating, but therapeutic, not like ow, ow, ow. <laughs> This is not about self-torture. This is about self-healing. Okay, so, and you can go, we were going down that line. You can also go down and up a little bit and down and work up into that. And this is also a good treatment, not only for the bones, but again, for, for your back and for releasing the spine. So, Let's see what else I wanted to talk about. All right, so any questions so far about anything? You want me to go over anything or explain anything further from what yes. I- Yes, hi, Ellen, yeah. I have a question. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I'm on a different computer today. But um, I want to know, would you recommend or suggest um, purchasing a um, reflexology socks or gloves? So we can maybe, well, I'm saying for myself, so I can pinpoint more thoroughly. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've always thought about getting them, but I was like, nah, I mean, I need them. Cause I try to look at the chart, but then I say, maybe I should invest in them. <laughs> well, it depends. You know, if you feel like you can follow this from the chart, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you'll get this in the notes. You can also, it's easy to just go online and just type, foot reflexology chart, you'll find a million of them there. Yes, I've but, looked at those, yeah. But, it, you know, like the nice thing about something like what what Felice is talking about is like they, they sell these socks that if you put it on, it's the, the map that we're looking at here is right on there. So you just, you get a reference point right on your foot. So yeah, it could be fun to do that. Um, Okay, because you not? work with the hands as well, right? Yeah, and, the, and, and that's the another point, right? So that's foot yeah. reflexology is what's on this chart. The mm -hmm. other reflexology areas in the body mm -hmm. where you have a lot of reflexes from one part to another are the hands. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ears is another place. And some people even do face reflexology where they map different points on the face to different organs. I just so, need a bodysuit. <laughs> there you go, there you go. You know what I say? I just say whatever makes it fun or easy, whatever is gonna increase the likelihood that you actually do these things mm -hmm. that, you know, like it seems affordable and doable, right on. You know? Okay, yes, yeah, thank you, thanks. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. And since we're, you know, this is a whole class on self-healing through touch, if you did want, and my goal here is to keep things simple and things that you don't have to buy a lot of the equipment for, but there are a lot of really wonderful massage tools. Some of them are manual things that you just kind of like press into a body area with. Uh, there's all kinds of like vibrating things and there's there's rollers and things you can use to like, like you lean on them and your body weight goes onto the roller and it opens up the muscles. You know, some of the body work people that I go to have suggested those things. There's a whole lot of stuff out there. Uh, some of it is 
a little bit trial and error, you might find something like a wooden massage tool might be too hard for you, it might just be, you know, not rigid, it's too rigid. So, you know, if you have a place like a health food store or somewhere where you can go and sort of check things out, that would be a way to do it. Or, or you know, if you want to buy simple things online and you can look at reviews on some sites. So those are all possibilities too. Um, but even like, again, it doesn't have to be a massage tool. Uh, you know, like a tennis ball is really perfect for massaging your feet. So the thing with that is that, again, unless you have like really amazing balance and really flexible feet, you don't just stand on the tennis ball, you would like sit and roll your foot over it. But these are ways you can work into the points also. So great questions here. Anything else anybody wants to ask? Okay. And really some of these things are so simple. Get more sunshine. It's good for a million things. You know, it's not just for your bones, although that is really important. It's just good for our overall health and our mood. And actually sunlight, like, okay, we're animals, we're not plants, but think about photosynthesis and all the things that plants do that require sunlight. Well, we also have a lot of processes that require a certain amount of light for them to work really well, including like building bone. So, and it's great for your move. It's one of the reasons that actually I moved from the Northeast, which is where I was, which is where I'm from, to Santa Fe was because I needed more sunlight for my mood. You know, some people get seasonal affective disorder, which is like kind of a depression which you can get in the winter. Um, and, and, and something you can do if that is you or you're just live in a climate where you're indoors a lot of the year and it's hard to get out in the sun uh, is to get full spectrum bulbs, which you can put in a, you know, in a lamp and that can help a little bit with that. Um, but sunlight, weight bearing exercise. I mean, yeah, these are important for your bones and they're good for everything else too. So uh, unless you're in a like real bone health crisis, then make these things part of your life, right? Um, so I think that's about all I wanna say here. I can answer other questions. Like I said, there's more information coming to you in the notes. Things I don't really want, this is not a class on nutrition, so I don't wanna spend a long time on that, but wanted to just, point out some resources for you. And hopefully this is stimulating you to think about this more and do some more research on your own and also check out, you know, of all these things I'm learning here, which things seems like really important to me. Like I personally think foot stomping, it's like really simple, really fast, twice a day, eight stomps. Plus, you know, I can get out a little bit of my frustration there if I have any. So there you go. All right. So we'll do, we'll finish our class with some guided imagery here. Let's take a little sip of water. Hmm. All right. And for this one, you can be in any position, you can be lying down, sitting up, but I'm gonna invite you to come to standing for those that are up for that, because we're working with this idea here of weight bearing. So usually a guided meditation is like you just completely zone out and relax. But let's see if we can get into a kind of relaxed mode while we're connecting with our bones. Okay. So just come into a nice, good standing posture. Check your alignment, roll your shoulders back and roll your feet, spread your toes on the floor. Just really feel your feet making contact. And, and yes. 
still got the foot chart up and you're small. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let me stop sharing. That you don't need that right now. Thank you. All right. And really, this is not this is there's not that much visual here, but um, let's just start by standing. Again, feel, spread your feet on the floor, bend your knees a little bit, and just feel yourself and see if you can bring your awareness inside your body and be your skeleton, be these bones, your skull, your neck, your spine, your rib cage, your arms. Just feel that it's always there anyway, but really bringing our awareness and our attention there as though we were like, we had an inner camera that we could zoom in to our bones. Yeah, and just feeling your bones there. And from your heart, from your spirit, from your command center up here in your, in your mind, just take a minute first to thank these bones that have given your body strength and solidity that have enabled you to do so many things. Move our arms, express ourselves, feed ourselves, dress ourselves, hug another person. These bones enable us to support the whole, all the functions of the digestion, everything else. Our, for women that have had children, our, our amazing pelvis bones even open up to have a baby, feeling your legs, how they've taken you so many places, dancing, standing, walking, riding a bike, sports, all these amazing things. And just taking a minute to breathe in some gratitude and send it right into those bones. Thank you so much for the bones of these feet and these hands and these little tiny joints and my neck and this strong back. And now imagine that from the soles of your feet as though you had roots that went down from the soles of your feet through the floor all the way down into the earth, into the dirt. And through those roots now, you're sipping up, like drawing up through a straw, earth energy, the nutrients, the minerals, the life force energy contained in the earth, all of that and drawing it up through those feet into the bones of the feet, up into your lower leg bones, into your kneecaps, and continuing to draw and lift that up into your thigh bones, all the way up into your hips, your sacrum in the back, sipping up this beautiful life energy moving up through the spine into the ribs, moving up, the rib cage comes up under the chest or the breast, all the way up, closing, creating a protection around our heart and our lungs, breathing up into the shoulder bone, this very strong area that where the arms hang from the shoulder bone there, collarbone, yeah, feeling your scapula, the, your shoulder blades. Incredible, all this bone in our bodies and feel all of it being filled and nourished, strengthened, energized, and feel this life energy now flowing up into the shoulder and then down into the upper arms, into the elbow joint, into the ar lower arms, floating down into the wrists and the hands. Yeah. 
And this energy continues to flow up from the collarbone and the shoulder blade area up into the neck and up into our skull, feeling all of this beautiful life energy, healing energy, filling your skull, the bones, surrounding that most important and sacred part of our bodies, our brains, protecting our sinuses, and letting this healing energy float down even into your jawbone and your teeth. And as though there was some kind of inner blessing coming into the core of your bones, into your marrow, feel this white light healing, energizing white light that contains all the colors of the rainbow, breathing in this white light to the very core of your bones and your body. And it may all feel a little imaginary, and that's okay. We're actually using our imagination here, but it's very powerful. And feeling your body just receiving this love, these healing messages, this nourishment from the earth. And may you continue to walk tall Reach your arms towards the sun. Have the strength to hug someone you love. Have the ability to walk and stand and move and dance and celebrate your life in this body. May your bones be strong and your heart be light. And may health and vital energy flow into your body, through your body, and circulate all around, creating more good health, more resilience, more physical strength, and all that you need to enjoy your life. And see if you can feel or imagine your bones actually thanking you for this healing treatment that you just gave yourself. And for yourself, and then you can share it if you want, what's like one really important thing that you want to remember from this class or that you want to practice after, after class is over? <clears throat> and then when you're ready, you can open your eyes and I will address any questions. And I see a good one right there, which I will answer. So how many times do you do the kidney one and 27? So if you're just holding the points, I would say maybe 30 seconds to a minute if you're holding the points. If you were doing slapping, again, I would try 25 to 30 slaps on those points. It's not a long time, but it's actually more like something that you do regularly. So, yeah. Now, of course, if, you, if, you, if you're really having severe osteoporosis and you're like, I want to do everything I can, maybe you're on medication or whatever you're doing with that, then you would probably want to do it several times a day or do it for a little longer, but as a maintenance thing, I would say short, but like daily or every other day. Um, so other questions before we wrap up for today? And also, because we all benefit from it, if there's any, like one thing that was like a takeaway for you, something you really want to make sure you remember, feel free to share. Yeah, good. Yeah, Pamela says she likes a reflexology. And that image of the foot, you'll actually get a copy of that in the notes. But if you are looking that up online, 
you would just look up foot reflexology chart. And you'll see there's all kinds of stuff there. Some of it is really hard to read because it's very small. So I was trying to find one that was at least pretty readable, but there's tons of stuff out there. And same thing if you wanted to look up hand reflexology or the ear, just type that into your search engine and it will bring stuff up for you, so. Good, any other questions before we, we end for today? And um, I'm also open to requests for topics. And so, I mean, you know, bone health is important for everyone. I'm trying to come up with things that we all wanna know about. So I've covered so far in the beginning, I was doing very general and then people were asking, well, what about this and that? And I realized, let me start by addressing particular the digestive issues was last week, and I'm sure I will revisit it again in the future. Um, I've done lungs and immune system, digestive issues, and we did the, the bone health today here. I think I might do something on sleep because that's, you know, certainly an issue for a lot of people, but open to other ideas on that kind of thing, like topics you'd like me to cover. So yeah, sleep, what was the other one that somebody asked about? I can't remember right now. But, uh, and also please feel free to give feedback to, to get set up, they'll pass it on to me or type anything you wanna contribute in, in the chat right now. So, yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm also gonna be doing just, if some of you are, you know, maybe new to me or have not been to other classes and not, it's probably gonna be, we're in the middle of May, probably in June, I'm gonna start teaching some other sequences in the beginners class, the Qigong for beginners. Uh, that will be like, there's, there's, a, there's a, it's movement and this isn't really a movement class, but there's something called bone marrow cleansing, which is a really great Qigong movement. It's not that complicated. That would be also really good for bone health. So I'm gonna start adding more of those things into the Qigong classes. Cause it's all, everything I'm teaching here seems to be all very interconnected. Uh, Reiki could be interesting to teach, but I can't really, teach Reiki in a one hour class. So I'll have to think about that one because I am a Reiki master. I mean, I could show you some things, but Reiki involves uh, an energy transmission that you get. So I'm not sure, I have to think about that. I would love to offer something around that. But the point holding is just, it's very simple. There's no energy transmission. It's really like all you need is the information and know what point to contact. So, but I'll think about that one. Um, yeah, anything else before we go? And thanks for your patience with all our technical challenges in the beginning. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's really beautiful praise to hear that. Um, so let me just say, since you were mentioning, like what else do I offer here on Get Set Up? So I teach Qigong, which is healing movement. And that, again, if you are concerned about building bone, Qigong, that's one of the reasons I'm not that worried for myself. I mean, I know I need to pay attention to it, but I do, you know, I do a lot of Qigong. And if you do a lot of walking and standing, you're, you know, that's, you're doing a lot for yourself with that. But Qigong, I teach four times a week here on Get Set Up. And I also teach, like this morning, I taught a class called Ageless Grace, which is playful dance done in a chair. And that's done really for brain health. And it's also a lot of fun. So I think you can look stuff up on the Get Set Up website under my name, which is Ellen Shapiro. Um, but I've got, so I've got this class, I've got four Qigong and two Ageless Grace classes. So plenty of opportunities to join me and 
I love teaching on Get Set Up. I love offering things that are helpful to people. So, and again, there was a lot in this class. It's, I cover a lot of ground. So I will send some detailed notes, but also do feel free to re request the recording. So you can go over anything we talked about here. All right, well, thank you all for being here. Another wonderful class. And again, if you have suggestions for topics that you wanna see me cover in this class, let me know. All right, thank stay you. well, everybody. Thank you. One class. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right, thanks for being here, everybody. And stay healthy, keep moving. Thank you, very interesting. Good. Good. You're welcome. Okay. All the best. Take care. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye.